In section 2.5, we looked at the measures of center of a data set. In section 2.6, we will look at measures of spread of a data set. So let's start off with two different uh, sample data sets, and we will calculate the mean of each data set. Remember, the mean of a sample is given by x bar. So in order to use proper notation, make sure you use x bar. And because we have two different sample data sets, we will use x1 bar. Okay, so the the mean of the first uh, data set is given by the sum of all the all the values. So you have four plus five plus five plus five plus six divided by the total number of values. So this will give us 25 divided by 5, which is 5. And again, for proper notation, always have x1 bar. We use x, x bar and not mu because we're dealing with the sample and not a population. For the second um, sample data set, we would use x2 bar. Again, we use x bar because it's a sample mean, and x2 because it's our second data set. This is going to equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 9 plus 10 divided by 5. This is 25 divided by 5, which is 5. Now, they both, both of the data sets have the same mean, yet there's, going to, there's a big difference between the two data sets. And let's figure out what that difference is. So let's create a stack dot plot for each of the data, data sets. On the stack dot plot, for each data value, we put a dot. So at four, we're going to put a dot. Um, we have three fives, so we're going to stack these, and we're going to put three dots at five, if I can. Um, and then we have one dot at six. Okay. For the second one, we have one dot at one. We have one at two. We have one at two. We have one at three. We have one at nine. And we have one at ten. Now here's what I want you guys to notice. In the first data set, our data, the, sp the spread of the data is much less than it is in the second data set. Okay, all the data values are very close to five. In this case, all the data values are spread over the number line. Okay, so here are the observations. Both distributions have the same mean, but very different spreads. Both distributions have the same mean. They both have a mean of 5, but their spreads are very different. For this reason, it's never enough just to look at the mean of a data set. In, understand, in order to understand the behavior of a distribution of data, we need to understand both the measures of center, such as the mean or the median, and spread, which we will talk about in this section. Okay, so in order to understand the behavior of a distribution of data, we can't just look at the center, such as the mean or the median. We have to look at both the center and the spread, because even though both of these data sets have the same mean. If you look at their spread, it's quite different. So we have to look at both in, in order to fully understand the distribution. Okay, range is a, is a measure of spread. In, in a range, we measure the distance between the highest and lowest values. So the range is pretty simple. It's just the maximum minus the minimum. In the, in the first case, our range is the maximum, which is 6, minus the minimum, which is 4, so the range is 2. In the second case, our range is the maximum, which is 10, minus the minimum, which is 1, 
in our range is 9. Notice that the first data set has a smaller range because it has a smaller spread. The second data set has a larger range because it has a larger spread. Standard deviation is a very commonly used measure of spread or variability. So standard deviation is a measure of variability. In other words, standard deviation is a measure of how much data values deviate, thus the word deviation, how much data values deviate from the mean. We have different notation for the standard deviation of a population and the standard deviation of a sample, and we also have slightly different formulas. So let's break this down. Sigma is the population standard deviation. And from now on, I will use SD for standard deviation. Okay, so this is uh, pronounced sigma. This is the population standard deviation. X is every value in the population taken one at a time. Okay, X is every value in the population taken one at a time. Mu is the mean of the population. Okay, mu is the mean of the population or the population mean. And n, this is the total number of values in the population. So this formula to calculate sigma, which is a population standard deviation, we take the square root of, uh, this E is, indicates the sum. Now, what do we take the sum of? We take the sum of x minus mu, which means each individual data value, minus the mean squared and divided by the total number of values. It looks complicated, but we're going to break this down in the next, uh, in the next part of the lesson. S, this is a sample standard deviation. So when, when we're dealing with the sample, we use the letter S for sample standard deviation. Let's write down what, what each of the variables means. S is the sample standard deviation. X is every value in the sample. X bar, this is a sample mean. Remember, x bar for sample, mu for population. And n, this is the number of values in the sample, which is also called the sample size. This is also called sample size. OK, so we take the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1, and we square root that. So let's see what this actually looks like. When you calculate the standard deviation by hand, start with the mean, then take the difference of each data value and the mean, so x minus mu, square that, take the sum of each of the squares, divided by n if you're dealing with the population, and then finally square root everything. So we do this kind of each step one at a time. Let's see an example. Calculate the population standard deviation by hand. So first we have to calculate the mean, which we did. The mean is 5. This is the, the same data set from um, the first example. Now we're going to take the, the difference of each data value and the mean. So we have 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. Then we have the second data value is 5. We have 5 minus 5, which is 0. Then we have another 5. So 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. And then finally, we have 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. OK, so, so what did we do? We, we found 
if you look at back at the formula, we found the difference x minus mu because we need that and then we need to square it. So now let's square each of these. If you take negative 1 squared, that's 1. If you take 0 squared, that's 0. If you take 0 squared, again, that's 0. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. The next part, if you look, we're going to take the average of the, squ the squares. So we're going to add all the, the squares, and we're going to divide that by the number, by the total number. So we're going to add 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1, which is 2. And we will take 2 divided by 5, okay? because there are, there are a total of 5 data values. And we're looking at the population, so we're, we're taking n. So if you take 2 divided by 5, this will give us 0.4. This is called the variance given by uh, sigma squared, where sigma is a standard deviation. Now the standard deviation, oops, the standard deviation The standard deviation is the square root of 0.4, so the standard deviation is going to be 0 0.63. Okay, so try the next one uh, by yourself, and we will go over this in class. For the next example, we will calculate the sample standard deviation by hand. So this represents a sample. First, we've got to find the mean. Okay, the mean should be pretty easy. We'll take 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 10. There are a total of four data values. So if you divide that by 4, then um, in this case, our mean is going to be 7. So our mean, this time our mean is given by x bar because we're dealing with the sample and not a population. Uh, our mean is going to be 7 in each case. Now let's take the difference of each data value and the mean. So if you take 3 minus 7, that's negative 4. Second data value 6. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Third one is 9. 9 minus 7 is 2. Last one is 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. Now we're going to square each of the, uh, the differences. So if you take negative 4 squared, that's 16. You take negative 1 squared, that's 1. You take 2 squared, that's 4. And you take 3 squared, that's going to be 9. Next, we take the average of the squares. So we, to take the average, we add these up. But remember, for a sample, so when you add up the 16 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9, you don't divide by n. You divide by n minus 1. So we're going to divide by 4 minus 1, or 3. Okay, so this will give us 30 divided by 3, or 10. Okay, this is called the variance. This is s squared. Then we take the root. So the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 10. So the standard deviation in this case is going to be 3.16. Okay, so try the next example by yourself, and we will go over this in class. In class, we're going to talk about how to use technology to, to calculate the sample and population standard deviation very easily to check your work.